Jeremiah chapter 23. The word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, that was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. So this gives us the date when oh, this one is written. We're starting to see dates now as we get closer and closer to the end of Judah. The watch, the which Jeremiah the prophet spake to all the people of, of Judah and to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, From the third, yeah, from the thirteenth year of Josiah, the son of Amos, the son of Amon, king of Judah, even unto this day, this is the three and twentieth year, the word of the Lord has come unto me. I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking. But ye have not hearkened. All right, God has been warning this nation from time one, from early one, many years. God has warned this nation even in the law that if they were to forsake Him, trouble and anguish would come. And now we're getting down to the days. Uh, we learned so far that the fourth year of Jehoiakim is the first year of the king of Nebuchadnezzar. And the Lord has sent unto you. All his servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them. But ye have not hearkened, nor inclined your ear to hear. So it's the people's fault. It is not God. He has done everything he has, or can, or is able to reach these people through Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Moses, the law. And yet, the outcome is they will not hearken nor listen. And today in 2015, when we preach the gospel and tell people about Jesus Christ, they don't hear. They said, turn ye again now, everyone from his evil way, repentance, and from the evil of your doings, and dwell in the land that the Lord has given you, given unto you, and to your fathers forever and ever. This is your land. It is given to you by God. Repent. Get right. You can stay in it. But they're not going to because they did not incline their ear. They did not hearken. And go not after other gods to serve them. Which they're doing. And to worship them. So there's a difference we've seen over and over between serving and worshiping. And provoke me not to anger with the works of your hand. And I will do you no hurt. Now Nebuchadnezzar is in his first year of reign. This is a final warning. He's coming. Next few chapters. He's going to come into the land three times. Get right. Repent. Yet ye have not hearkened unto me, saith the Lord, that ye might provoke me to anger with the works of your hands to do to yeah, the works of your hands to your own hurt. So it's their own doing. It is what they're not doing. And what they're not doing is obeying God. Such as Adam. Don't eat of that fruit. Well, he ate of it. Don't worship those gods. They're worshiping him. Behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, saith the Lord, and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant. Well, look at that. A Gentile. Jeremiah 27, 6, 43, 10, Isaiah 44, 28, and 45, verse 1. You know, Nebuchadnezzar later on gets right. And God doesn't destroy Babylon until after Nebuchadnezzar is out of the picture and his son is sick. And will bring them against this land and against the inhabitants thereof and against all these nations round about and will utterly destroy them and make them an astonishment and a hissing and a perpetual desolation. I'm going to destroy Jerusalem. I'm going to destroy Jerusalem. 
And I'm going to do it with, with Babylon. I'm going to do it with Nebuchadnezzar. He even names the guy he's going to do it. How's that for prophecy? He's only in his first year of his reign. Verse 1. I wonder if his name is even known yet. I mean, his name's going to be mentioned over and over and over in the Bible, but at this point, is his name really famous? You know, who, you know King Nebuchadnezzar, ooh, worry about him. And this is the man that God says he's going to come and destroy? More I will take from them the voice of mirth, the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, the voice of the bride, the sound of the millstone, and the light of the can. I'm going to take rejoicing. I'm going to take partying. I'm going to take daily events. I'm going to take millstones, making food, grinding, making flour, and the light of a candle. I'm going to take that all away. For this whole land shall be desolation and an astonishment. And these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. Now this is the 70 years that we learn later on. Uh, we find Daniel. We find that the 70 years may be reckoned to begin with the first deportation of Judah to Babylon. 2 Kings 24, 10-15, B.C. 604. Um, that's according to the Syrians. 606 according to Usher. 604 B.C. 2 Kings 24, 10-15. Uh, there's there's going to be... In, the, in Babylon, God tells him 70 years. And Daniel picks up Jeremiah. And it shall come to pass when 70 years are accomplished, that I will punish the king of Babylon. And that nation, saith the Lord, for their iniquity, and the land of the Chaldeans, and will make it perpetual desolation. So 70 years are going to be up. When, when Ezra start, when comes back and sets that foundation for the temple. Then Nehemiah comes and sets the foundation for the wall. Then the people start coming. I will bring upon them, I will bring upon that land all my words which I have pronounced against it. Even all that is written in this book, which Jeremiah has prophesied against all the nations. So Jeremiah is inspiration from God. Oh, it was written just by men. Well, what do you expect it to be written by? Kangaroos? God told Jeremiah to write and to speak, and Jeremiah did it. He never fault Shakespeare. Oh, he just copied from Shakespeare. Well. For many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of them also. And I will recompense them according to their deeds, according to the works of their own hands. Now what, what God just said there is a promise that he made to Abraham, Genesis 12. I believe it is. I will curse them that curse you. Babylon came and took care of you. I'm going to take care of Babylon. Yeah, but Babylon was called by God. Babylon said, no, sorry, I don't want to do it. I've heard somewhere somewhere in your, in your law, Lord God, that uh, you said about cursing those people. God, I don't want to be part of it. Can you find somebody else? Okay. Not sure to be any other nation that would be glad to get the Jew. See, God doesn't force Nebuchadnezzar. He just said, Nebuchadnezzar, I want you to go in Israel and destroy it. Okay, I'll do it. Really? Yeah, I'll do it. And you would assume by the warnings that God has given Judah and God has given Israel, he would somehow give Nebuchadnezzar a warning that, you know, if you do it, i got to get you. That's a promise I made to my people. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel unto me, Jeremiah, take the wine cup of, his, of this fury at my hand, and cause all nations of whom I send thee to drink it. Now, cups in the Bible like this are cups, cups of judgment. That cup that Jesus drank was the cup of our sin. 
Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. This cup is damnation of, of, of grind, the, the wrath of God poured out upon every nation. Every nation is given a cup. And when their sins and their filth that fills that cup up, God says, here, now drink it. And it's God's anger. They shall drink and be moved and be mad. This is the result of drinking your sin. Because of the sword, war, I will send among them. And then I took then then took I the cup at the Lord's hand and made all the nations a drink. Now this is not literal. Jeremiah ain't you know calling in the Arabians over here and saying, Take force, take this drink. He ain't calling over Turkey and said, Here, take this drink. He ain't calling upon the uh, you know Ishmael, here, take this. It's figure of speaking that here is a cup. That God has given to all nations, and He's given it through Jeremiah, and it's going to be poured out to wit Jerusalem and the cities of Judah. See, they're going to go first because they're God's people. Shall not judgment begin first at the house of God and the kings thereof and the princes thereof to make them desolation and astonishment and hissing and a curse as it is this day? Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and his servants, and his princes, and all his people. Why, why does Pharaoh in Egypt show up again? That's who Israel has been showing up for help. They keep going down there. Solomon's going down there, getting the three things he wasn't supposed to get. All during this time, they've been running to. They'll run to Egypt to get help against Nebuchadnezzar. They'll run to Egypt to get help against other nations that are fighting them. Even when the land is conquered, there are people that steal Jeremiah. And uh, I forget his friend's name there. And they, they go down to, to Egypt. And Egypt should just turn and say, listen, we don't want you guys here. We've had enough of you. Our history shows that you guys are trouble. Get out of here. And all the mingled people and all the kings of the land of Uz, that's where Job was. Check out your Bible map on that one. All the kings of the land of Philistines, oh, we know they are enemies of Israel. Ashkelon, Azah. Necron and Raymond of Ashdod, Edom. When Babylon, when Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar comes in the land, I believe it's Obadiah preaches to us. There are Jews that leave through Edom, and Edom hauls them up, gathers them up, takes them up, and hands them over to Babylon. That's a curse upon them. And Moab and the children of Ammon. There's the children of Lot. All the kings of Tyre. All the kings of Zion, the kings of the isles which are beyond the sea, Dedan, Teman, these are just cities, and Buzz, and all that are in the outmost corners. I have no idea what that one means. Outmost corners. All the kings of Arabia, all the kings of the mingled people that dwell in the desert, all the kings of Zimri, all the kings of Elam, all the kings of the Medes, all the kings, and that's the Medes are going to come down and conquer Babylon. All the kings of Zimri, all the kings of Elam, all the kings of the Medes, all the kings of the north, far and near, one with another, and all the nations of the world, Genesis chapter 10. Which are upon the face of the earth. You mean north, central, south America that they don't even know about yet? That's the earth. And the king of Shishak shall drink after them. That's the name for Babylon, Jeremiah 51, 41. You want to talk about worldwide war, world war? This is a, I can't say world war. This is a worldwide cup drinking of the wrath of God. Oh, I don't see America there. Oh, don't worry. God said all the kingdoms of the world, which are on the face of the earth. There's America. There's Mexico. There's South America. You don't need to worry. They're there. I mean, if God would put uh, whatever whatever America was called before it was named America, and the people, oh, what's that place? So he puts all the kingdoms of the world, which are upon the face of the earth. And he tells us in other books of the Bible that, that the earth is a circle. And he tells us it hangs upon nothing. 
So this is going to be a worldwide wrath when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back with that sword out of his mouth. And the Bible says that he shall trample them and the blood shall go up to the, to the reins of the horse. That's how you get, you know, a cup full of wine. Therefore thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Drink ye and be drunken and spew, and fall, and rise no more, because of the sword which I shall send among you. So see, the cup is the sword. The cup, is, you know, go ahead, be drunk, be sick, and fall, and don't come up no more. It's the sword. It's anger. It's wrath. The sword. What is, what is it said about the Lord Jesus Christ when he comes back? A sword that comes out of his mouth. And shall be, if they refuse to take the cup at thy hand to drink. The Lord, didn't we? Then thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Ye shall certainly drink. We're America. We've got rights. Take the cup. Oh, we don't believe in you. Take the cup. Well, we got the Queen of Heaven. They had the Queen of Heaven early in Jeremiah. They ain't going to stop you. And God says, You shall surely drink. You shall surely drink. For lo, I begin to bring evil on the city which is called by my name, Jerusalem. And shall, uh, and, ye, eh, and shall ye be utterly unpunished? Listen, judgment begins at the house of God. If I destroyed my city, my people that I love, that God says is his wife, Hosea, if I destroyed my people, you don't think that I'm going to destroy you for your sins? How prideful are you? Oh, it happened to him, but it won't happen to me. You shall not be unpunished. For I will call for a sword upon all the inhabitants of the earth, saith the Lord of hosts. The whole world. Every nation's in it. Therefore prophesy though against them all these words. And say unto them, The Lord shall roar from on high of heaven, coming down, and utter his voice from his holy habitation, heaven. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation. He shall give a shout. Now, if you don't get the next reference, as they that tread grapes, you lost the whole concept of the second heaven, Lord Jesus Christ. That's exactly how it's described as his coming back. He's treading the wrath, the wine press, the sickle is put to the earth against all the inhabitants of the earth. Get yeah, it? All the inhabitants of the earth. So get yourself a encyclopedia, dictionary, or online thing. Look up all the known people in the earth, 2015, and those that are unknown. And they are all the inhabitants of the earth. A noise shall come even to the ends of the earth. For the Lord, north, east to south, I mean, east, to, east to west, north to south. For the Lord has a controversy with the nation. Well, aren't we a, a Christian nation? God has a controversy with the nation. He will plead with all flesh. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. That message is going worldwide. He will give them that are wicked to the sword. He that has the son has life, but he that has not the son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Say the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation. Maybe a, maybe a world war. And a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. 
That's how God answered Job. A whirlwind. And the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth even unto the other end of the major worldwide death. They shall not be lamented. There will be no sadness, no sorrow, no funeral. Neither gathered. This is going to lie where they died. Solomon says, if a tree in the forest falls, whatever direction, there shall it lie. Where this dead body lies, where all these dead bodies lie, that's where they're going to lie. Nor buried. Ooh, you imagine the stink of They shall be dung upon the ground. Howl ye shepherds and cry, and wallow yourselves in ashes. Job got down in ashes. When there was mourning and, and anguish, they would get into ashes. He principal of the flock, the head of the flock. That's why you get the guy who's in a school called the principal. Out of the King James Bible. For the days of your slaughter and of your dispersions are accomplished. And ye shall fall like a pleasant vessel. You know, God said at the beginning of this chapter, repent and get right. And he said, you wouldn't listen to me. So God says, guess what? It's not coming. It's come. And yet we still got a few more chapters before it comes. But it's signed, sealed, and delivered. And the shepherd shall have no way to flee. Nor the principal of the flock to escape. We just read a couple chapters ago that they were they weren't taking care of the sheep. They didn't care about the sheep. They should have been warning the sheep. They were telling the sheep, don't worry. Give us a hundred dollars, we'll give you a plant a, a prayer hanky and all the blessings that go with it. A voice of the cry of the shepherd. And a howling of the principal of the flock shall be heard. For the Lord has spoiled their pasture. No more wealth from the flocks. No more flocks. And the peaceable habitations are cut down because of the fierce anger of the Lord. For... It says, he has forsaken his cover as a lion. Lion's going out looking for something to eat. For their land is desolate because of the fierceness of the oppressor. We read about that judgment a few chapters ago. And turned out to be the king. And because of his fierce anger. Listen, you dwell with sin, you rebel against God, you ain't going to get good. And that's exactly what all these nations are doing. But he's beginning with Jerusalem. He's telling you, you know what? If I'm going to do it to my people, you better believe, thus saith the Lord, I'm going to do it to you. Don't think you're, going to, you're so prideful you're going to escape. And the thing is, when you read as, as such as we have from Genesis 1 to Jeremiah 25, America is following the footprints that Judah is doing. And even worse. And if America doesn't think that God's going to pass a judgment upon her. As a Christian Bible nation, she does not know what the Bible says. Jeremiah chapter 25 says to America, if I did it to my people, I'm going to do it to you. It may not be today, but it's going to happen. As soon as your cup is full, you're going to drink. And I don't know where the cup is for America, but she's already starting to drink. <laughs>